Welcome to the Jamestown First Baptist Church Worship Hour. Established in 1930, the First Baptist Church has been instrumental in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across the Cumberland Mountains. An aggressive local missions program has assisted in establishing sister churches in Fentress County, the Pickett State Park area, and Morgan County. With programs to minister to the individual and the family, we invite you to join with us in our live worship service. preaching so don't don't be scared <laughs> um mike was supposed to help me this morning with this um me being up here you guys know what this this means um next week um next monday a week from tomorrow starts our um, collection for operation christmas child um we are way behind in getting our boxes um done for what we were last year so i need help i need mike needs help we need um you know people to do boxes we need stuff to go in the boxes um so whatever you can do please help and i know we've got judgment house coming up um but we will really concentrate we'll concentrate on judgment house and then next monday we will really concentrate we will have to concentrate to make our goal for um for operation christmas child um the men have agreed to, hope all of you know this, the men's ministry has agreed to help the 4-H do the pancake breakfast like they did um, two years ago. And when we did that, um, all the proceeds go to Operation Christmas Child and we raised 8000 not 8000 we raised $800. So that really helps with shipping and everything else that goes on that week. Um, but the pancake breakfast will start um, 7 o'clock, end at 9.30 um, on the 11th. So that way we'll be done before Judgment House starts. So anyway, thank you very much. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see this number out this morning and uh, see all these smiling faces. And uh, just so grateful that you're here this morning. Thankful that the Lord has uh, uh, brought you our way this morning. Uh, we want to welcome our uh, our church members this morning, and if, and we also want to welcome our guest. If you're here this morning as a guest, we want to make you feel uh, comfortable today and as, as much as possible, and uh, just want you to take part in the worship service this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and go to God in prayer this morning, then we'll uh, turn it over to Brother Gary. Our Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank and praise you, God, for the blessings of life you give us. We thank you, Father, for uh, your wonderful love. And thank you, Father, for your compassion that you show to us. And just ask you, Father, that you would just help us today. We pray, Father, that you would just uh, speak to our hearts today as we look into your precious word. And just ask you, Father, for all the things that's uh, transpiring here at the church, uh, the Judgment House and the OCC uh, the following week. We just ask you, Father, that you would just orchestrate in all of the uh, things that we do and pray, Father, that you would receive glory. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you for all things. For this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Just before Brother Gary uh, leads us in song, have Brother Bill uh, Tan to come and uh, read the Scripture. Good morning. Our scripture this morning will be from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. 
Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And so Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Would men come forward, please? thank you so much for this day and we thank you dear Heavenly Father for giving us a sense of humor now dear Heavenly Father we ask that you bless this gift for the ongoing of your work and dear Heavenly Father we thank you for your gift of your son Jesus Christ now dear Heavenly Father we ask that you forgive us where we may fail you and this we ask in Jesus name Amen Amen Morning, let's stand.
Fasten your seatbelts. Are we ready, choir? Let's stand. We're going to pray. Let's stand and praise the Lord.
just a moment of personal privilege here, since I got the microphone, to thank our youth for last Sunday. I tell you what, my heart was blessed even more the second and the third time I watched it on their website. So go to the website. Uh, the youth are so special. In fact, one of our youth's birthday today, Roger, 16 today. Happy birthday, Roger. Meadows. But I just want to say that God has blessed me coming here and being with these youth. I tell you, they are such a joy to me. And I just want to tell the youth, thank you for all you've done. <laughs>
okay, give a short testimony to this battery gets charged. Well, I just thank the Lord that I can be here this morning, and this song has such a message to it, and it's really a prayer. I'm really looking forward to heaven, but I don't want to go by myself. I want a lot of people to go with me. Must I go? sits down. I'd like for y'all to sing Amazing Grace this morning. Come on back up. Y'all want to sing. Everybody wants to sing. Everybody needs to sing. I will help you.
we've been there. When we Ten thousand years will be just a moment when it compares to eternity with you. We just love you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Wasn't that good? Amen. Thank the Lord for those beautiful songs this morning. Everyone all right? Come on. All right. Appreciate this choir. Appreciate you, Brother Gary, for all that you do with the, the choir, the youth, just everything that you do here at the church. We uh, uh, so greatly appreciate uh, your service here at the church. and uh, Appreciate you being here this morning and uh, uh, good-looking crowd this morning. Uh, and that goes for everybody. Uh, everybody looks good. Looks like you've got your Sunday best on. Uh, ever, <clears throat> ever since I've been saved as a 19-year-old boy, I've tried to look my best when I come to the house of the Lord. People ask me, they say, do you wear a suit all the time? And do, you wear, do you dress up like that all the time? And it's not that you have to. There's no requirements. I don't find any requirements in the Word of God. Uh, but it's just, it's my convictions is all it is. But people seem like almost every week, Brother Gary. And uh, I'm sure you'd sit there and listen to me if I, if I come up here with, uh, uh, without a jacket on. And uh, just a shirt and even no tie. It wouldn't make any difference. Uh, but I feel like that I wouldn't be in the right place spiritually for me. Uh, you know, we have different convictions, right? And uh, what works for you may not work for me. And what works for me may not work for you. We're just, we're different, aren't we? We're, we're peculiar people. We're in, individually, we're different, aren't we? But we're all saved, those that know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know why I said that, but anyway, I did. And uh, I don't know why we sang Amazing Grace, but I just felt like God wanted us to. And uh, 
I'm just glad to be saved. I'm glad that God showed mercy to me. And uh, if God hadn't extended mercy to me like He did, I, would, I certainly wouldn't be standing here uh, preaching the uh, everlasting life of the Word of God to you this morning. And, uh, and I'm sure if God hadn't extended mercy to you, you wouldn't be sitting there on that church pew. And even if you're here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Savior, God has extended grace, He's extended mercy to you that you could be here this morning. Uh, the love of God is endless. Amen. He has an endless love. Let's look in the Word of God here this morning in, in Luke chapter 17. Probably a very familiar passage to most of you Bible readers. Uh, Luke chapter 17, let's find it again, what Brother Bill read uh, previously. And let's look again this morning in Luke 17. And uh, beginning in verse 11, I'd like to read those verses one more time. And it says, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorifying God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Our Father, we humbly come before you today. We thank you, Father, for your eternal word that's per forever preserved. And Father, we ask you, Lord, this morning that you would just help us just to share a few thoughts. It may seem scattered, but I pray, Father, that you'd help us today. Use us, God, in a way that Jesus Christ would be lifted up in this place as He already has been. And I pray, Father, that we continue this morning just to worship Him. And Father, we'll be careful to give You the praise and the glory and the honor for all things. For this we ask in Christ's name. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Leprosy in the Bible, it's... It's a type of sin. Now, leprosy in itself is, is not a sin. Neither is any other type of disease that people have. But the disease or the leprosy that we're speaking about this morning, although that leprosy in itself is not a sin, but sin, or but, but sin is a result of leprosy. All types of diseases that people have, it's a result of sin. The, pe the reason why that people get sick, it's the result of sin. We could go back and we could preach on sin this morning, but we're not going to. But I want to speak to you this morning on that thought this morning on leprosy. Leprosy in the, in the days of when this passage was written, it was a... It was, a, it was a dreaded, horrible disease that, that people could contract. And even in the day that we live in, there's still leper colonies throughout the world in India and other places. It's a disease that at one time, as we read about in the scriptures, it was a disease that, was, that could not be cured. It was incurable. And it was a horrible disease. It was a horrible disease that people could, could contract during that time. We find in this passage that Jesus was passing through this little town and he came across ten men. That was not uncommon in those days to find a, a group of lepers gathered together. And Jesus, when he passed through the town, there were ten men that were gathered together that had this horrible, dreaded disease. They were county, counted as outcasts to society. 
They were those that, that people didn't associate with because we find in the passage that they were unclean. Just as leprosy is a poison that would, it got into the bloodstream of, of those people. It's, it's kind of like sin. How that sin, it's, it's in our bloodstream. It's in our life. It's, it's in our everyday nature. The Bible says in Psalm 51, 5, he said, he said, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, what David was saying, he said, I was born with this sinful, dreadful nature. You know, you didn't wake up one morning and decide that you were going to become a sinner. It just comes natural. My little children and your little children, if you've got any little children, and once you had little children, I'm sure most of us in here, but they didn't wake up one morning and just decide that they were going to be mean. They didn't wake up one morning and decide that they were going to start telling you lies. They didn't wake up one morning and decide, well, I think I'm going to go out and steal today. We didn't have to teach them that, did we? That's part of our sinful nature, is to go contrary to what the Word of God says. David said... In sin was, did my mother conceive me. In other words, what David is saying, he said, I was born with this sinful nature. Now we have to teach our children a lot of things, but I'll tell you right now, you don't have to teach them to sin. It's going to come natural for them. And by the way, it came natural for us, right? No one had to teach us to be bad. No one had to teach us to be mean. It just came natural. Now I'll tell you right now, it doesn't come natural for us to be good. It doesn't come natural for us to do the right things. But it's only by the grace of God that we do the right things. It's only by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we, that we are what we are and that we have the very being that we have is because of the grace of God. The reason that we perform the way that we do, it's because of the grace of God. If it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd still be stealing. If it wasn't for the grace of God, we'd still be lying all the time. If it wasn't for the great grace of God, we would be still in bondage to this sinful nature that once had us captive. These men here, they were in a dreadful captivity of this leprosy that they had no way of escaping. And it's kind of like kind of like us. We had no way to escape. We had no way that, that we could escape the dreadful, sinful disease that each one of us had at one point or another, at one time or another. These men here, they could not cleanse themselves. They could not cleanse themselves. It was an uncurable disease that they had. It was a dreadful sight. First, it showed itself in, in small ways. They would go to the high priest with maybe just a spot that came up on them. And whenever he, they went to the high priest, he was the one that had to pronounce them whether they was clean or unclean. And it just started out small. Do you know what? That, that's exactly the way that sin does. That's the way that sin does in, in our lives. It starts out as just a small spot. Just something small. It's, it doesn't look like it's as, of any significance. And it looks like it's very small and nobody will notice that. But then it starts to expand and grow. That's the way that leprosy was. It started out very small. And then they went to the high priest and he would have to pronounce them whether they were clean or not. Oh, it was, a, it was a terrible time whenever they went to the high priest and they heard those words, unclean. Now when the high priest pronounced that they were unclean, that meant that they were abandoned from society. That meant that they had to leave their children and their wife at home and go to a leper colony to live. They were outcast to society. What a horrible disease they had. What a horrible 
predicament, what a horrible condition that they were in because of this dreadful disease that they had. Do you know that one, one day in eternity that sin will keep us from our family? Sin will keep us from our children? Sin will keep us from our wife that we love if we don't get it under the blood. Jesus Christ, was he's the only remedy that a person has with the sin that they have in their life. He's the only cure. The only cure that these men had was the hope that the high priest would pronounce that they were clean. I, many people came to the high priest and very few you'll find in the scriptures that they left clean. Most of the time he would pronounce that they were unclean. Unclean. So we see here that it started off small. It was an incurable disease in human means. The Bible says in Acts 4.12, Neither is there any salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby that we must be saved. He's the only cure. He's the only remedy that we have for our sin debt. He's the only one that can take care of that sin debt. He said the whereby we must be saved. You know, there's, there's not another way. And I may say that a lot, but I want to tell you, there's not another way. People are trying to find all sorts of ways to get to heaven. I've never met anyone that is in their right mind that didn't want to go to heaven. I'm sure that there's not a person in this building this morning that don't want to go to heaven. Is there anyone here this morning that don't want to go to heaven? Raise your hand this morning. Anyone, anywhere, I, I will pray for you. Anyone, anywhere. There's not anyone. And I'm sure that there's not anyone listening on the television or on radio this morning that don't want to go to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven when they die, right? But everybody has their own remedy. Every, it seems like everybody has their own way that they're going to get there. You hear all kinds of strange ways. But Jesus says here, He says the only way that you're going to get to heaven, He said there's no salvation in any other than the name of Jesus. You know, I'm a, I'm a Baptist this morning by choice. But I'm a child of God by Christ. I'm a Baptist this morning by choice, but I'm, I'm saved because of what Jesus done for me. Regardless if, if anybody ever finds out that I'm a Baptist, which most people know that I am. But regardless if people know that I'm a Baptist or not, I want them to know that I'm a child of God. I want them to know that I love the Lord Jesus Christ and He's the one that paid for, for my sin debt. He's the one that could cleanse me and make me righteous and holy in His sight. The Bible says that it's Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. That's the only hope that we have, is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Just as leprosy had sent the multitudes away to the camps, to the leper camps, that's what sin will do to us. It'll separate us from the house of God. It'll separate us from our eternal home, our eternal destination that we want to go to. The Bible says in Isaiah 59, 2, He said, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins, He said, have hid His face from you that He will not hear. You know, I've, I've heard people say through the years and even lost people that I would go visit and he, they would say, well, well I, I'm praying. And there's nothing wrong with praying. It's good that we pray. We need to practice that more often. We need to be a praying more, right? Amen. But did you know according to Isaiah 59 too, that God does not hear the prayer of a lost person? Regardless of how sincere that they might be, 
The only type of prayer that the, that the Lord Jesus Christ hears of, from a lost person is a prayer of repentance. Because he's not their God. He's, he's not their God. Their God is the God of this world. It's what the Bible says. Their God is the, is the God of this world. And the only way that we can make communication with our Heavenly Father is through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we find here that they were, they were separated, these lepers, they were separated from the camp. They couldn't stay at home. They couldn't, and when I say at the camp, they couldn't go to the tabernacle to worship anymore. The tabernacle was inside the camp, and they were banded from the tabernacle. They couldn't go to the house of God and worship anymore. What if you had a, a disease this morning, church, that you was not allowed to come to the house of God anymore? What a horrible disease. What a horrible disease that these men had, all ten of them, Brother Gary, had this dreadful disease called leprosy. I find in this passage, it's, it's a very unique passage, we find all ten of these men had the same illness they were all lepers. And we find that Jesus, he was passing through that way, and for some odd reason, they knew who he was. They began to cry out his name. They, they began to cry out and say, Master, have mercy on us. Master, have, have mercy on us. You know what he asked them? What can I do for you? What, what can I do for you? Well, we know what he, they wanted done, right? They wanted to be cleansed from this horrible disease that they had. Do you know what? That's the requirement of salvation is crying out to God. Crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what these men were doing. And the Bible says as they were... Jesus said, go to the high priest... And the Bible says in the passage that I read to you this morning, as they were going, they hadn't even got to the high priest. They'd already, they'd already met the high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says as they were going, they were healed. I can just imagine in my mind these men leaving that camp, going back to the, where the high priest was, which was in the camp where the tabernacle was at. And they started their journey back to, the, back to the tabernacle where the high priest was at. And I can see as they were walking, they were still in sight of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they, got, they had gotten just a little ways down the road and they probably started looking at themselves. They realized that they'd been healed. He's the great healer. Amen. He's the great healer. He's the one that can heal our diseases. He's the one that can set us free. He's the one that can break these chains that we're in. And they noticed as they were leaving the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says they were healed. They hadn't even got to the priest. They hadn't even got... And the Bible says only one. Let me ask you, how often when God does something for us, how often we go back and thank Him for it? How often when, when God touches our body or, or maybe pays that bill or whatever it is, do we thank God for that? We find that only one man, he, he realizes, all of them realize they were healed, but the one man turned back. Jesus said, where's the rest of them at? But this man, he came and he, he fell at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he worshipped him. Do you know, it's, we, we count it strange a lot of times, the position that we are in when we worship God. The, this man, he was worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ on his knees, on his face, worshiping the Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. I just got through the introduction this morning. And I want to ask you this morning, I just want to ask you, when was the last time that you thank God for what He's done for you. There's a point here to be made in this passage. Not only did 
was the all, all ten of them healed, but only one person came back and thanked him for it. Do you know what? He, he, he does more for us than we'll ever know. He's already done more for us than we could ever thank him for. He has. But here this, these people were, and only one came back and said, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the healing that you've performed in this body. Can you imagine being in that place? Can you imagine being in, in that condition? Leprosy caused limbs to fall off. Caused holes to appear on your face. They had to walk around with a, with a covering over their upper lip every time that somebody came near the leper, leprosy colony. And say, they had to say unclean. Unclean. But Jesus had healed these men. They, he healed every one of them. And only one came back and said, I want to thank you for what you've done. Are you thankful for what God has done for you? Amen. You, you know, you, you may be here this morning, and you may be like the other nine. As far as I can tell in the passage that I read, that I've, that I've studied so many times, as far as I can tell, only one person left that place, a born-again child of God. And it was the one that thanked him. Only one. He healed all of them. Jesus, He still heals people. He still heals people regardless if they're a child of God or not. But only one of them got saved. You know what? God may want to heal you today of the sin nature that you're in. Of the, of the, the sin that you're going to have to answer for one day if Jesus Christ's blood has not been applied. I want us to stand this morning. There, there's no greater time to get saved than today. There's never been a greater time for you. Never been a greater time for you if you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. There's never been a greater opportunity for you to get saved than today. Right now. While Brother Gary plays on the piano softly... I want us to bow our heads this morning throughout the auditorium this morning. I just want us to be honest with God. I just want you to be honest with God. And say, if you're here this morning and you're lost, you know that you are. God knows that you are. Other people may not know that you are. Your wife may not know it. Your husband may not know it. Your children may not know it. But God knows our hearts. He knows the condition that we're in. If you're here this morning and you're lost and you know that you are, I'd just like for you to raise your hand while nobody's looking around this morning. Anyone here this morning that say, Preacher, I'd like for you to pray for me. I'm not for sure that I'm saved and I want to be saved. I don't want to die facing God in the condition that I'm in. Anyone anywhere this morning, hey, please pray for me. Anyone anywhere, let me ask you this. You may be here this morning and you're not where you need to be with God and you're not thankful like the other nine. Maybe you need to come and pray this morning. Is there anybody here like that? I'm just not, as, I'm not thankful the way I need to be. Anyone anywhere? I'm sure there's people here this morning that could be more thankful. If God has spoken to your heart while we give an invitation this morning, why don't you walk these aisles this morning and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to help you, and He will. While we sing together this morning, just obey the Lord right on the first stanza as we sing.
Amen. I enjoyed the service today, and I hope you did as well. And uh, please try to come back this evening or uh, evening service. Uh, usually it didn't last a real long time, and uh, we start at 6. And, uh, and uh, just, just pray for the services. Pray for all the things that's uh, going to be a transpiring here at the church. Uh, we've got uh, Judgment House. will be a, uh, actually starting Wednesday. The official day is Thursday, but uh, they'll be here Wednesday at getting ready. And then Thursday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. Please pray, and for, especially for those that are taking part in that. And if you're still, if you'd still like to take part in that, we could still use more volunteers, and we'll plug in somewhere. All right, and uh, pray for the OCC starting the 13th that whole week as we're up here uh, working uh, like mad to try to get uh, get things out. So uh, please, please pray for that. All right, you're you're at liberty to go. Thank you very much for being here this morning.